Describe that. Describe? Describe that. Describe what? Describe that. I didn't get you. Brahma. Describe God? Oh. <laughs> Describe God. <laughs> <clears throat> if God could be described, that which you call as God wouldn't be worth pursuing. Describe God, you can't. It is a ludicrous question. It is because there is a very important saying, I think it's in the Quran, but it's a very important saying, no one knows God but God. If you if you agree that God is the ultimate and then you should not say anything about God, uh, you no, should not talk about God, you should not use uh, any notions to describe God, including the notion uh, being, uh, non-being, uh, beginning, ending, good and evil, none of these uh, notions can be applied to God because uh, God is the abs absolute, is uh, um, mm, the ultimate, it's like nirvana. Nirvana is the extinction of all notions. In other words, God is, is so big, so immense, so wonderful, so marvelous, so close to us, the source of our being, the giver of all gifts, that we, we, we can't possibly form a concept of him can only accept him, accept the mystery of this presence and to contact him through gratitude and love, which admittedly is not going to heaven, but at least uh, it's a crack in the mystery that we begin to pursue, perceive that somehow everything that happens uh, is manifesting the goodness of God, all appearances to the contrary notwithstanding. I know in many cultures around the world, God has been always been established as some kind of an entity. Any entity, however large it is, is bound to be a limited entity. When you say something is, any something is always a limited possibility. So when you say God as an entity, especially an entity that you can describe or define, that means it is a limited possibility. If it's a limited possibility, it's just like you, one more thing. So you want to meet that or not, it's up to you. <laughs> but what is being referred to as God is just people's idea. It's a whole lot of belief systems. Every culture believes its own kind of God. I come from a culture where there are million gods, you know, <laughs> it's a very rich culture. <laughs> if you can create a million gods, it's nice. <laughs> now, people have always been believing that if you believe in one god, everything is going to be okay. But our history is sufficient proof to tell you, one god people have been creating lots of problems too. <laughs> Describe God! Where does he live? I need to start with saying, where does he live? <laughs> Everywhere. How can there be anything that is not God? Us with our limited mind capacity, with our limited we can't cannot know God. God is the Sufis say God is beyond even our idea of the beyond. And where can God be found? God can be found everywhere, because one should never limit God. To describe God, God can't be described. I like the Buddha's teaching. The Buddha talks about that which we call the unconditioned. He says to a group of monks, there is an unborn, undying, unchanging, uncreated, we can't say what God is to label anything and say it's this, limits it to this. But when we talk about it in terms of the unchanging, the uncreated, that which is, 
whatever definition we can give that's no definition, loose, then we come to God. The greatest description of God is probably in Exodus, in which uh, Moses asked God, if you recall your Bible studies, uh, asked God, well, who shall I say sent me to Pharaoh to deliver Israel from the power of Egypt and its oppression? And the voice replied, tell them that I am sent you. And so the definition that God gave of himself is, is simply isness. I am without any limit whatsoever. Am meaning amness, isness. And so everything that is of his very nature has to be in relation to that which is without limit or, or uh, any kind of limitation. When you say, describe God, you have already assumed that something exists. I would say, don't assume anything. Everything that you do not know, have the basic humility to see that I do not know. Only when you see I do not know, there is a possibility of knowing it. When you say, describe God, you have a firm assumption that there is somebody sitting up there, this assumption has created enormous pain and suffering to human beings on this planet. Probably maximum number of lives have been taken on this planet in the name of God. Most horrible things on this planet have been done in the name of God. Simply because the fight in the world is not between good and evil. Even today, the wars in the world is not between good and evil. It's always between one man's belief versus another man's belief. The moment you believe something that is not a living experience for you, you are already in conflict with somebody else who believes something else. Here in Vietnamese, we call canon, and French people say, "No, it's a c'est un chapeau," and 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 uh, American people say, "No, it's a hat. You are wrong. It's not canon. It's a hat." But that is, that is, that reality. I call canon, you call hat, other call chapeau. So God is that, that reality of greatness, of beauty, of growth. Wherever you see great understanding, wherever you see light, where you see peace and love, that is God. And that is Buddha. If you want to seek, when you say God, you're talking about the source of life. Why this idea of God has come to you is, when you were born and you opened your eyes, all this creation was already on. So you assumed, if so much creation has to be there, there must be a creator. So if there is something called creator, if there is a force or a person or a thing which is creating all this, where can it be? Wherever it may be, if you look at the function of the existence, you can see, if it is there, it must be everywhere. If it is everywhere, it cannot be an entity. So the only way you could approach it is, for example, yourself, if you look at yourself, when you were born, you were only this much, and now you became this much. How did all this happen? Did somebody stretch you from outside? That which you refer to as the creator is constantly functioning within you, creating all this. So if you really want to know what is the nature of the creator, you must turn inward. And the higher self is most accessible in the heart. There is, according to the Sufis, there is in the heart an innermost chamber of the heart that belongs only to God. And if you go there in meditation and prayer, you are with God. It is a place of oneness. There the lover and the beloved are one. But God can be found everywhere. There is a lovely practice by Brother Lawrence, the practice of the presence of God. He was a monk in I think the 16th century. And whatever he did, he did with God. He worked in the kitchens. He hated working in the kitchens. But whatever he did, he did with God. He peeled the potatoes with God. He washed the carrots with God. God is everywhere. Well, we can't wrap our intellect around that kind of concept, but we, we can reach out to it in love by uh, 
by hanging out with this presence, that is to say, awakening to the divine presence within us by thinking of God. And, and it seems that God is so appreciates the lightest, slightest attention from human beings and is always listening and, and always responds to any sincere cry for help. Though he doesn't always uh, take away our problems, which, which usually everybody would prefer, he has another way of reacting that is most people haven't quite grasped yet, and that is he gives us something better than fixing, and that is joining us in the situation so that we become united with God in our difficulties and, and participate in what seems to be the great adventure or purpose of the universe, which is bringing the whole of the human adventure to happiness. And so our efforts, our good thoughts, our good actions are, are collaborating with the divine goodness in trying to bring a divine happiness into human life and the ultimate purpose of creation from this perspective is the transformation, not just our improvement as human beings, however desirable that is for our relatives and friends, but a recreation. In scripture it's called the new creation, in which by grace we anticipate the ultimate purpose of, of, of God in creating, which is to share the maximum amount of divine life, light, and love, knowledge, and happiness that we can possibly receive. <laughs>